The White House is calling. <laughs> Note the time. This is an historic moment. Richard Barrington is about to turn down his first presidential appointment. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Barrington. Now listen, Freddie Joe. I know this is Jimmy Carter. <laughs> M Mr. President, I I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not used to getting telephone calls from the White House. Well, that's all right. I'm, I'm not too used to making them. <laughs> I hope you've had a chance, sir, to consider my offer. Oh, yes, sir. I I've thought about it very carefully. Good. Then may I count on the benefit of your counsel during the months ahead? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can start tomorrow morning bright and early. <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir, Mr. Banker, and I appreciate it. <clears throat> Call me Dickie Bob. <laughs> Mr. Barrington would like that right over there if it's not too much trouble. Ah, uh, nothing's too much trouble, miss. I understand this is only the second day for Mr. Barrington in the White House. Yeah. Well, as one presidential appointee to another, I aim to please. You're a presidential appointee? For sure. I was city hall maintenance chief for Mayor A. Beam in the city of New York. <laughs> yeah, in the election, I, uh, I, it was up to me to deliver flopwish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in return, I got uh, this appointment, 18 grand in salary a year, and an autograph signed picture from Jimmy Carter. <laughs> the picture goes in my saloon in Flatbush. I'm gonna stick it right between George Raft and the Pope. <laughs> Sounds like you got it made. Oh, that's it, miss. Uh, I'm gonna have to get that new picture from Mr. Barrington. Oh, by the way, uh, this Mr. Barrington, uh, he's an important guy, huh? Oh, well, the president thought he was the best man in the country to advise him about the Republican opposition viewpoint on national issues, and he happens to be the dean of the Washington Press Corps. Hey, dean. Don't have the things like that. Al, just break it to him yeah, gently, well, okay? Ginger, where's Richard? i got to see him before he reads the column. The dean is in the john. <laughs> John. That means he's reading the paper. I mean, he'll be furious when he sees what they've done to his column. Listen to this. Although it might serve as a temporary spur to the economy, the president's proposed tax cut would lead eventually and inevitably to greater inflation. It is a statesman's way out. Now, the way Richard originally wrote it was, it is a coward's way out. What a dumb typo. What kind of idiot would do that? Well, Alex, see, I, I wouldn't go as so far as to say, call it a dumb type. Ginger. Or, you know, in the scheme of, of life, you know, what is, what is, what is... Uh, you uh, know. Ginger, what happened? Richard changed it last night. Richard Barrington? Yeah, sorry, Tom. <laughs> the man that I've worked with and, and admired for seven years? The most dedicated principal man I've ever known? I think you're narrowing in on the right one. <laughs> he sold out. One day in the White House and he's throws away everything he stands for. I warned him. I knew it. I'll kill him. I'll physically kill him. Well, hey, are you a little annoyed about this? <laughs> annoyed? Uh, look, Al, I want you to sit down. I mean, relax so that when you face Richard, you can be calm, rational, and adult. I don't feel calm. I don't feel rational, and I definitely do not feel adult. What I do feel is like punching somebody in the nose. Oh, come on, Al. Anybody. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Listen, why don't I just leave you all alone to, you know, chat and be violent? <laughs> Whatever. Now, there will be quite a crowd there, but I'll introduce you, so don't be nervous. Yeah, let me ask you a question, Freddie Joe. Do I really have to face all those reporters at a press conference this afternoon? Oh, you bet you're a sweet potato, Dickie Bob. <laughs> 
What's the point of us landing a big old catfish like you on our team if we can't show you off in public and prove how brilliant we are? Yes, but I'm used to asking questions at a press conference, not answering them. Oh, <laughs> well, like we say down home, the outhouse is a two-seater. You gotta learn to be sociable. <laughs> They really say that? <laughs> oh, Richard, Al and Lucy are in there. Oh, good. No, Richard, wait. Good morning, Lucy. Hi, Al. Richard Barrington, you miserable son of a... Gun? <laughs> What's eating you? This morning's column. It's a disgrace. Oh, they left my picture out again? <laughs> now, you know what I'm talking about. You changed It's a Coward's Way Out to a Statesman's Way Out. Al, what are you so excited about? I changed one word. One day in the White House and you sold out. At that rate, in three weeks, you'll be a registered Democrat. <laughs> oh, what a lousy thing to say about anybody. We have a deal, remember? While you're working here, I write the column. Correct. So, tomorrow I write a column called President Carter's Political Seduction of Richard Barrington. Well, but Lucy, I appeal to you. Do you think I was seduced? Uh, let me put it this way. I think you should have told him you had a headache. <laughs> oh, come on, Al. Ease off. I mean, one word? In the Gettysburg Address, if Lincoln had said three score instead of four score, the score would have ended up the same. North one, south zero. <laughs> Richard, I think changing the column was despicable. Well, now, wait, Al, wait, just, just a minute. Now I think you've Al, gone too far. Al, you Al, have gone Al, too far. Don't blame Richard. It's all my fault, Al. I'm to blame for Richard being despicable. Hello, lover. <laughs> See? <laughs> Charlie, what do you say? I was the one who asked you not to call the president a coward. Me. But, but I didn't know you were going to change coward to statesman. Couldn't you have thought of something like... Like... Like Frady Cat? <laughs> Frady Cat? I'm a photographer, not a writer. <laughs> hey, uh, got a minute? Hey, if I'm interrupting anything, just tell me. Uh, you're interrupting. I'm sorry, I tried to stop him. Stop me? Sweet face, you don't stop me. You move me. You know what I mean? Hello, <laughs> Lanny. Hey, so only take a couple of minutes. Hey, company. Hi, Lanny Wolf. <laughs> Lanny is the president's joke writer. Lanny Wolf is comedy. <laughs> Well, I just write a killer, too. There's a White House dinner for the ambassador from Saudi Arabia tonight, okay? The president will get up and say, I'd like to congratulate you, Mr. Ambassador. I understand they just struck land on your oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know... It's, uh... <laughs> oh, it's all right. Chief didn't like it either. The guy wins one lousy election, and all of a sudden he knows what's funny. Lanny. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm here, to leave. I just heard you were having your first big press conference today. Some heavy stuff, right? You need a few opening jokes. I'm your man. <laughs> Listen, I'm leaving now, but I just want you kids to know that you're beautiful people. And I really mean that. From the bottom of my heart. Hasta la vista, huh? That's Spanish for chow. <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> I gotta watch myself. I'm beginning to like that guy, and it scares the hell out of me. You're beginning to like a lot of people around here, and that scares the hell out of me. Oh, but you were, I was just saying this, honey. I mean, at least you could have changed from the coward's way out to the state's way out. Charlie, no, 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 hold it. Now, would you hold it? I don't believe this. Charlie, the woman I love more than anybody else in the world. Al, my associate, my best friend. Lucy, like a sister to me. <laughs> All accusing me of selling out? I mean, I don't know how you could think such a thing. That's such nonsense. Uh, Mr. Barrington? Mm -hmm. huh? There it is, just like you ordered. <laughs> you know, timing is so important in life. Why was I born without it? <laughs> Thanks, Lafferty. Oh, hey, do you still want that picture of Mondale? <laughs> Lafferty, get out. <laughs> All right. All right, so it's one little word and one little picture. 
Will you tell me what's so important about one little word? One little <coughs> word. Excuse me. <laughs> one little word. One little compromise to spare the president some embarrassment. I mean, we should have learned by now. I mean, there were some guys who probably made one little compromise to protect the president. And then they made more and more until they ended up thinking their only job was making compromises to protect their president. Well, the result of that was one more little word, Richard. Watergate. Come on. Well, have a nice day. <laughs> Watergate? I'm here two days and already I'm a national scandal. I don't even have anything in my files to burn. you see what you've done? Charlie, I have done nothing wrong. Now, would you just get off my back? Richard, you're changing. And I don't think I like it. What? Maybe you shouldn't have taken this job. No, no, just, just wait a minute, Charlie. You were in favor of this, remember? If the president needs you, you go. Well, I listened to you and I went. There you are. The man I love would never have listened to me. <laughs> Before you took this job, you never cared what anyone thought about what you wrote. You were always your own man. You went from a rugged individualist to a rugged yes man. I am not a yes man. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> I still don't care what people think. Look. If Al thinks that I sold out, let him put it in the column. And Lucy can tell CBS. What about me? You could shout it to the whole world. You don't want me to do that. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do, because people will only laugh at you, Charlie. You see, they just don't care. Richard, don't tempt me to prove you wrong. Oh, I'd like you to do it, Charlie, really. Then you'll find out what a horse's patootie you really are. <laughs> <laughs> that does it. That does it. I will see you at your press conference. And oh boy, will I have a couple of tough questions for you. Number one, why did you sell out? And number two, what part of a horse is a patootie? <laughs> Senator Joplin? Well, first you try to frame him, now you're trying to hang him. Well, what brings you to the White House? Well, the President is meeting with the Democratic leaders of the Senate to discuss his foreign policy over the next four years. Very important. Big, big stuff. Well, congratulations. Not really. I came by to ask his appointment secretary why I wasn't invited. <laughs> he wouldn't see me either. Excuse me, uh, Richard, your press conference is in 10 minutes. Oh, yes, the press conference. Uh, well, Ginger, call Freddie Joe and tell him to cancel it. And if he's not there, call Jody Bob or Billy Jean or Tammy Wynette or whoever. <laughs> Wait a minute, cancel a press conference? Well, that's unheard of. <laughs> Listen, if you have a whistle, blow it. Don't take out the pee. <laughs> Senator, you've got to stop reading those cocktail napkins. Richard, why on earth would you cancel a press conference? Well, because Charlie's going to be there, and she might ask me some embarrassing questions. Well, so what? There'll be 20 reporters there. All you got to do is learn how to ignore Charlie. Here, I'll show you. Ginger, you... Here, you sit here. Sit here and you pretend to be Charlie. Right there. 
Now, try to get my attention. Notice, Richard, I've got my eyes on a level where I cannot possibly see her. No matter how much she waves, no matter what she does, I can always pretend that I didn't even know she was there. How are you, sir? <laughs> Not bad. Where did you learn to ignore people like that? Before I became a senator, I was a waiter. <laughs> yeah, but what if she's persistent? I mean, sooner or later, you've got to answer a question. I'll show you how to do that, too. Ginger, ask me a tough question. Like what? Well, like, uh, did I take a trip to a foreign capital at taxpayers' expense and do absolutely no government business? Hey, now that's a good question. I know. Some smart aleck reporter asked me that last week when I came back from Paris. <laughs> Go ahead, ask me. Ginger Livingston, CBS News. Um, Senator, is it true that you took a pleasure trip to Paris at the taxpayer's expense? God bless you, girl. I'm glad you asked me that question. It deserves an answer. We all know that Paris is a city of sin. Now, the American people are no dummies. They know that sin is immoral. And there's no reason why they should have to watch it on television night after night. The American people are entitled to something better than that. They're entitled to something wholesome, something that the whole family can watch. Which, incidentally, is why I'm in the forefront of the fight to keep the Mary Tyler Moore show on television next season. Next question, please. Good. Oh, Sid, I've got to admit, for the first time, you are good. I haven't seen so much bull since the Merrill Lynch commercial. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Well, I gotta mosey on over to the Senate. I don't want to be late for the adjournment. See you later. <laughs> so long. Well, Richard, it's time. Do we cancel or not? No. No. I believe I can handle it. Hey, uh, you got a minute, babe? Uh, not now, Lanny. I'm on my way to my press conference. Excuse me. I know that big time. Here. What are those? Jokes. <laughs> jokes? Yeah. Lanny, I'm not going to tell jokes at a press conference. Use them. You'll be a knockout. I'm telling you. Lanny, I'm not trying to be Henny Youngman. You could do worse. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Take them. You crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Lanny. Sure. I appreciate the thought. That's okay. The guy loves me. <laughs> and so, without further ado, may I introduce Mr. Richard Barrington. Thank you, Freddie Joe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I will forego the usual opening statement and uh, we'll go directly to the questioning. Charlie Drake, National Photo Features. Yeah, are there any questions over here? Charlie Drake, National Photos. Over here, Mr. Barrington. Yeah, any questions on this side? Uh, Lucy Daniels, CBS News. <laughs> any, anybody there in the back? Charlie Drake. Uh, Brooks yeah. Associated yeah. Features. Yeah. Yeah. So, doesn't anybody have a question? <laughs> Uh, oh, Deke, Deke, Deke Whalen of the Oakland Tribune, a very old friend of mine. Deke, what's your question? Uh, my question, Richard, is why don't you answer the other reporter's questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> yes, uh, God bless you, Deke. I'm glad you asked that question, and it deserves an answer. You see, it's the only way we can find out things as concerned Americans. As a matter of fact, now you're I think not that answering my past, question. It's been quite, no. This is starting to sound like a cover-up. A cover-up? Yes. No, that's, that's ridiculous. No, then no cover-up. Why are answering their questions? Well, I'm not answering their, their questions. They're, they're questions because I... I... Uh, I... Uh, I... Um, um, <laughs> You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the Oval Office. <laughs> they asked me to make a turn to the left. I did, and now I'm a communist. <laughs> uh, 
kept looking at me. Afraid to face my colleagues in the press. Afraid to answer questions. And all because of one little word. I guess it was more important than I thought it was. You know, when you're near uh, so much power, it's very easy to compromise. Someone told me that a little while ago. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I am ready to answer all your questions. And I'll start with Miss Charlie Drake of National Photo Features. I have one question. What part of a horse is a patootie? <laughs> Is that the only question you're going to ask? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Al Brooks. I have no questions. I'm taking the statesman's way out. Uh, Lucy Daniels, CBS. <clears throat> yes. Are you going to answer Charlie Drake's question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, yes. In response to Miss Drake's question. That part of the horse is Richard Barrington. And the question that my friends had the kindness not to ask concerned my column this morning. You see, originally I wrote that the president's tax reform program was the coward's way out. And then I changed my mind and I made it the statesman's way out. What kind of pressure did President Carter put on you to make you change that word? President Carter had nothing to do with my changing the word. Was it, was it someone on his staff? Someone on the president's staff? No one in his administration someone had anything to do with it. make the change? Now look, Richard, I know you. And you wouldn't sell out unless someone was telling you. Damn it, I sold out all by myself. Which is why I'm resigning. <laughs> Mr. Barrington, uh, Dickie Bob, it was only one word. Yes, Freddie Joe, I know it was only one word. But that's the way it starts. And that's why I'm resigning. I have a great deal of respect for President Carter, but I don't have to live with him. And I do have to live with myself. And with me. Hey, wait a minute. You're living with Richard Barrington? That's not what she meant. No, no, that's, that's not what she meant. No, no. The press conference is over. Thank you all. Thank you all. Well, here's the end of the shortest career since Mark Spitz went into show business. <laughs> I was very proud of you. Hmm? I still am. Uh, Richard, I uh, have... Oh, Ginger, Ginger, there's something that I'd like to tell you. I'm afraid you're out of a job again. No, no I'm not. Huh? You, see, you see, Lanny asked me to be his secretary. Uh, Isn't that erotic? I mean, ironic. <laughs> It's highly, it's highly ironic. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Barrington? Yes. Uh, this is Jimmy Carter. <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. President. I just heard uh, what happened at the press conference. And may I say, sir, although it's a personal loss to me, I not only understand, but admire the position you have taken. I mean, if I ever find myself in that situation, I'll resign too. <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> right, Mr. President. Around here, I've learned you can get in a mess of trouble with the wrong use of one little word. You know what I mean? Ciao. I wrote that. 